everyone, this is Ross, and today I want to talk to you guys about must-have things for your orchard and garden. If you're going to be doing this seriously, which most of you are and probably are, I have a lot of recommendations for things that you should have and uh, should need. The first thing I want to mention while we're inside is you need a food dehydrator. Absolute must-have. Uh, we're going to go outside now, away from that loud noise. But a dehydrator, I'm telling you guys, is literally amazing. Um, total lifesavers. They completely change the complexity and the textures of your food. Must-haves. Um, there's also something I think is a must-have, and that's a wheelbarrow. And I want to show you mine. It's a bit of a heavy duty one. Um, it's called a gorilla cart. And this gorilla cart saves my life, man. When I have to move all of my pots from the patio here over to the greenhouse, this thing's real heavy duty. Um, you know, you could throw a lot of soil in here, a lot of material in here. It's really, really nice. I also recommend getting a potting bench. Potting things up on this if you have a lot of pots. It's a lifesaver. Um, I also recommend getting some kind of irrigation. Uh, if you have a lot of pots, drip irrigation works really well. Um, it also works for things in the ground here, and this is a raised bed that I have it in. Um, I also really like these poles, these EMT poles that are 10 feet tall. I use these to grow vegetables vertically. Um, they also come in handy as just really nice steaks. Um, you know, I would say that a greenhouse is a must have, but not everyone has room for something like that. But I do, you know, if I'm going to be doing, you know, growing things in my life, which I always will be, I think it is a must have. Um, here we have a timer for automatically watering my trees. This also is connected to the fertilizer, so uh, timers are really nice. A siphon injector to automatically add in fertilizer into my um, water. Uh, I also want to show you while I'm over here another heavy duty stake. These are T posts, and I think these are really, really nice. Um, for staking up more lanky trees that are of larger size, particularly my persimmon here. Very lanky tree, and the damn thing fell over one time in a storm. Ever since, I've had it staked up by this T-post, and it has not moved. <laughs> so, it's pretty soon I think I'm going to take that T-post out of there, now that the tree is a year older since I've uh, staked it up. but. Steaks are very important, of all sizes, of all kinds, whether or not you're training a young tree. You can see here, this guy doesn't look too good, but I'm purposely not watering it to help it lignify. You can see it's staked up here, otherwise this tree would be all the way on the ground. Um, something else that's really nice for a nursery setting, or I mean uh, an orchard setting, is this wire. This is a 14, 12, 13 gauge wire depending on what you want. I get that stuff at Home Depot from a company called Ook, I think they're called or pronounced. Um, must have for growing many things. Trellising is so much easier. Raspberries, blackberries, grapes, any kind of vine, kiwis. This here is uh, rice holes. I really love this stuff. You know, it's weed free weed seed free you know it's uh, I get shipped to my house pretty cheap actually for free from amleo.com I love that stuff um, what else can I show you guys I want to go underneath my house and show you all the tools that I use um, but before I do that I want to show you guys some other things that really have come in handy I think raised beds are okay but not, not nece uh, necessary, you know. I think uh, you could definitely make a raised bed like we have here. 
without using wood. Um, just level it, off, level it off nice, add in the materials that you guys want. You know, it's unnecessary, I think, to have raised beds. They do come in handy in certain uh, situations, though. You can see here I have chicken wire. Chicken wire is a must-have for growing vegetables. Uh, if you don't want critters in your vegetable patch, I mean, this, is, this helps a lot. Um, and I got chicken wire, guys, pretty much around every vegetable bed that I have. You can see here's another vegetable bed back here. Again, chicken wire all around that. Here's where that 14 gauge wire comes in. We just put this wire in because we're going to be growing more grapevines along this. In fact, we may have to tighten it up a little bit. See how uh, wobbly that is. But let me show you guys all the tools that I use because these tools, man, they come in handy. And I think there's a lot of them that you guys may not know of and you could probably get some good ideas from um, if you guys have any handy things things that you recommend that an orchardist or someone with a garden should have let me know I'm gonna get myself a chair to sit on here <laughs> sorry guys but this is where I keep all my tools underneath the sunroom we store a lot of trees in here and there's a lot of shit in here, seriously. Um, sorry for the language if anyone's watching with kids, but we got shovels, and this is pretty obvious, but I think a really good spade shovel is very, very important. You don't wanna skimp on the quality. I also think the same thing about loppers. Um, certain things, guys, that, uh, you know, are your tools, your really, um, important tools I think you shouldn't skimp out on quality I've done that in the past you know I'm young I'm stupid you know I don't know any better but I think the quality really goes a long way the same thing with pruning shears gotta have nice pruning shears guys these are Felco's gotta have a nice saw a saw is really important uh, for pruning larger trees I'm telling you um, this is a silky saw that I got in Japan. I also have a second saw right here that we use for root pruning. This one, I'll you know, if it gets in contact with soil, it kind of dulls the blade. So it's important that if you're going to have a saw specifically for pruning trees, you know, don't let it get in contact with the soil. Uh, I also have a hori hori here. I think this is a very valuable tool. Um, it's not just a fad. I think it actually has a lot of uses. It's kind of like a garden shovel as you see here, but the garden shovel doesn't compete in the amount of uses that this Hori Hori has. In fact, I'm trying to develop some kind of way to have these, uh, these holsters here around my belt and always have them. That way I'll always have a Hori Hori and my pruning shears with me. I think they're very, very important to have almost at all times. Probably also a knife of some kind. This is a really nice knife my girlfriend got me uh, to cut vegetables. It's got an interesting blade on it. You can see that there. Um, I also think uh, just random tools like this, like you know, grips, vice grips, and and uh, pliers, and different little small tools like this, like a hammer, um, screwdrivers. I think they all really come in handy. So. You know, get yourself a little small set of tools like that. This thing here, I don't know what this thing is actually called, but this is kind of like a dibbler, and that's what I use it for. You can make holes in the in the soil, and then you can put you know um, put seeds in that hole and those holes. It's really nice. Some people have longer dibblers, thicker dibblers, which are also equally uh, nice, but probably even better. Um, you know, I also got myself a cedar. As you can see here. This is really cheap. A lot of this stuff in here uh, I've yet to use because I just got a bunch of it and uh, it was so cheap. I got this stuff on like clearance. But this thing will like seed a a seed. You click the button here, I guess, as you're put as you're uh, doing it, and it puts out you know very few seeds or one at a time, and it's just more efficient that way, I think. So we'll try this. Who knows? We also have a soil thermometer, and this is extremely important. I have a couple of these. This is a backup. Uh, soil thermometers, man, they don't last very long, and finding one that's good 
and reliable and that will last is hard to find. This one was so cheap that I figured $2, might as well just get it. I think it was really $2. Um, I also have Impresso tags. We talked about plant tags. Super, super important. You need a pen to go along with these or a pencil. That way you can mark on the tag and make that marking there. Um, duct tape or packing tape, obviously really nice. I mean, all this stuff you think would be pretty standard, but it actually comes in handy. Tin foil, I use this to wrap my air layers with. Um, other knives, we have grafting knives. Don't skimp out on a grafting knife, although this one was really cheap. The Open L knives are very inexpensive. Standard scissors, you would not believe how much this comes in handy to cut things like twine or green garden uh, stretch tape, which is this stuff here. I use this all the time. This comes in handy so much. Um, this is really great for trellising, staking. The other thing I use for trellising and staking here is this. This is the rubber, or pla I think it's plastic actually, I'm sorry. This is the plastic tree tube. And this stuff I've got off of amleo.com as well. The plastic tree tube, guys, really is really, really nice. Um, it's a lot more sturdy, more durable than your garden uh, stretch tape here. So I really like, I really like it for that. Um, we've also got paint pens. These are extremely important for cuttings, marking things that are going to last longer. This is a really uh, long-lasting oil-based paint. So I use those for my cuttings, marking my cuttings. We also got garden gloves, and I think garden gloves are really difficult to find of good quality because a lot of them are usually too big for your hands. If you go to like Lowe's or Home Depot, they'll just give you a giant glove, and it's really not something you want to wear. Uh, but if these are really snug on your hand, I mean, and they're made of nice material. These are supposed to be bamboo. So they're quite durable. Um, I've had no problems with that brand so far. Here's the 14 or 12 gauge wire. I'll use this stuff for a lot, I'm telling you. It comes in handy. Um, here's a pen for the tree tags. What else do we have in here? We have rubber bands. Rubber bands come in handy. Um, I like to put my strawberry plants when I, I pull them up. And I'll put them in the fridge. And what I'll do is I'll wrap them up in a rubber band. Um, it's nice to just put things in rubber bands. Uh, I also use these rubber bands for grafting. Um, very, very important to have those for grafting. This is a deer repellent. I've talked a lot about that. Liquid fence works pretty well against the deer. This is wilt proof. We're going to be using this product to help desiccation, help prevent desiccation on my fig trees this year in the wintertime. Um, this will go on my in-ground trees, all of them. This is here, Spectricide Immunox. We just got this as well. Uh, this is an inorganic spray. It is one of the it is the only inorganic spray that I use. I use this on my grapevines, and it completely eliminates black rot. Um, according to a friend of mine in the area, he puts it on when the, the new growth of the grapevines is approximately one foot in length. He sprays this on the grapevines, and it kills black rot. And that way, I'll have actual grapes this year that ha don't have black rot. This is a um, siphon fertilizer siphon injector. This puts the, the fertilizer into my water. A tape measure, extremely important for measuring things out, building things, building raised beds, uh, getting an idea of plant spacing, unbelievably important. These here are my organza bags. You use them for literally everything, protecting my fruit, um, protecting vegetables, you name it. If I can protect it with that, I'll protect it. I also have um, this horrible product here, which is a cheap version of a bird netting <laughs> that you get at Home Depot. Bird X is what this is, and it really is a horrible netting, but it's cheap. Um, if you want to get a nice netting, you have to spend a little bit of money. Not a horrible idea. This here is, um, God, what is this stuff? I just got it. This is the frost protection um, sheets to put over your your crops. 
Um, this really nice, it's really nice for uh, extending the season in the beginning and also extending the season in the fall. So I'm going to be putting this on a couple of my plants probably. You know, this fits exactly my beds. It's 25 feet long. So I have a 20 foot long bed and a 18 or 16 foot long bed. So that'll be great. Um, I also have these plastic bags here, sandwich bags. These are nice for air layers. Um, we also have a couple more sprays I want to go over with you guys. This is copper. I also use sulfur. They're both in, they're both organic. And I also have this product here called uh, Garden Dust, which is sort of like um, it's sulfur, copper, and pyrethrin in one, which is really nice. So it's like a insecticide and a fungicide. But the probably the one of the best insecticides out there is Surround, and this is exactly what this giant bag is here. Um, it's a kaolin clay that uh, there's actually a couple uses to it. And then this here is sulfur. This is a nice acidifier for the soil for blueberries. Quite important if you're going to uh, grow blueberries and you don't have acidic soil. This here is diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth adds a lot of silica to your soil. Um, it also can kill insects like ants on the surface of your uh, of the soil. So I use it mainly for silica, but you could use it for other reasons. Here's my pump. It's a one gallon pump and you can spray all kinds of things out of this thing. Um, if you're going to have an orchard, you're going to grow things like apples and pears and stone fruits. You're going to have to spray things. It's just, it's just something um, you're going to have to do at some point. Uh, at the very least, at the bare minimum, you should be spraying a horticultural oil every year. And I'm going to show you guys a horticultural oil right now. Here's some boxes that I use for shipping and whatnot. You can see these down here. These boxes come in real handy when I'm doing trades or selling things, but you know I rarely sell things. Back in here is the horticultural oil. I know it's quite dark. Let me see if I can brighten this up for you guys. It seems impossible for some reason but let me get these things out of here here's beet tea um, quite a controversial product I guess as are most sprays but this is really for the cabbage moth um, what else do I have in here that's interesting here's the horticultural oil we're gonna be doing a separate video just on this because I believe it to be that important and you know that's pretty much it this is a uh, captain jack's dead bug brew but i barely use that and i think there's something else in there uh, we also have these plastic sheets you can get these for like at home depot for painters they use these and these come in handy for preventing uh frosts for you know just to throw it over your plants you know it's not going to be the best f source of protection but you know this is some kind of protection and also is nice for root pruning. You can put this stuff down if you're root pruning and then all the excess roots and soil will be on this thing so that you're not making a huge mess. Um, we have a have a heart in here. Nice for catching um, you know different critters and whatnot. Um, we have all kinds of pots back in here guys all kinds of pots these are really small pots that I've saved over the years um, you know we have grow bags in here you know you also need a really nice rake I definitely believe in a rake um, a metal rake that you can also move things around with or pick things up I think a pitchfork is nice I mean you gotta be a true farmer to have a pitchfork but I think it's necessary here we have gutters these are 10 foot long gutters. You can grow all kinds of things in these gutters, believe it or not. Um, and they're not too bad to look at. You could set up a nice system with these. Here are the EMT posts that are left over that I've already put away. A nice thing with the EMT posts, you can get rebar, drive rebar in the ground, and then put the EMT post over top of that and slide that in real nice so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, you know, we have all kinds of leftover wood here or treated wood. Um, we have tarps in the back here and blankets for frost protection. There's a tarp I throw over the greenhouse in the wintertime. Here's all kinds of grow bags uh, that I'm not using right now. And then we also have back in there a whole bunch of five gallon size pots. Um, 
you know, all this stuff needs to be cleaned up in here and organized a bit because what we're going to be doing is storing a lot of fig trees in here in the winter time. So I'll get everything organized relatively soon under here, but I did want to show you guys all the different tools that I have and, you know, what their purposes are. And that's kind of it, you know. We've got um, pretty much back there, there's some trellises and different cages and whatnot so that I can trellis up tomato plants or trellis up different various things. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it, guys. I I recommend that you get all these things. If you can't afford them all right now, obviously don't worry about it. But you will be going to Home Depot or Lowe's pretty frequently, um, like I did the first couple years, needing things. Here's a small space heater I use for my greenhouse. Uh, a pH tester, very important. Parafilm. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So if you enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below what it is that you guys recommend that uh, every orchardist or gardener should have. Alright guys, take care and we'll see you for the next one.